I, this is a demonstration how to use the commands in a Excel add-in that we made for you automate ETO type work inside of Inventor and SolidWorks. This video will be focusing on how to use the tool of SolidWorks and we'll be focusing on the simpler commands involving manipulating dimensions, equations, the activities of um, components and patterns and constraints. And We'll go through how to set visibility on a couple of things, and in a separate video, I'll go through some of the more complex and more solder specific um, tools like configurations and weldment configurations. So we'll start with uh, going through how to use the basic dimension command. So a dimension, we'll go and pull up a tool, add it in. So this tool will capture data inside of SolidWorks, so you don't have to type it in. So we're going to go and capture the data in SOLIDWORKS as the open model. So in this case, since this is an assembly, the only thing we had access to were the two components. So what we'll do is we're going to open this part and go and capture the dimensions inside of it. So we've captured the dimension 1 that belongs to Sketch 1 and dimension 2 that belongs to sketch 1, and dimension 1 that belongs to the box extrude, so this would be referring to the depth of the box, and this is sketch 1, and then it has its two dimensions, and then we have the cut extrude, and that actually belongs to sketch 2, since that was sketched on the face of the box extrude, and that just refers to the diameter of that part where it's constrained to the center of the, uh, of the unit. So, and also, we can also set, we also get the two features that we can change activity on. So, let's go and capture those dimensions real quick, and let's do some manipulation with them. We'll capture um, those dimensions, and let's go and capture the, and we'll go and capture the uh, diameter of the hole. And then below, we're going to go and capture the two features. Okay, so, I'm going to be done with our tool. Um, so we have the initial dimensions that those are placed at and then U will be unsuppressed so it's current status and then S we can switch it to S and I'll change it to suppressed so um, we have another parameter in the we have another glo we have an equation set here in the global variables for depth so to set depth what we're going to do is we'll we're going to so and set an equation up for um, so equation and that's going to be equal to depth or depth and it's going to belong to the example part again and we'll set that to its initial value of 40 okay and what we can also do is so we don't have to manually type these in is we're going to go and It's, we're just going to copy a drop down that we had pre set up. Um, the template or pre beta list, I've been manipulating this template so it's a little adjusted. So, um, so now we got those set, we're going to go and close this out. And we'll close this part out. So now that we have those pulled up, let's, we can do some manipulation on those. Let's change these to 30, change this to 15, and we'll change the depth to 30 to match. And we'll go and build it real quick. Alright, and again, this would be in Excel. If you wanted to, you could do something as simple as say this equals um, F2. And we'll just copy that there and there. Oh, F2. And now we can just change that. So, this is part of what Brett made this tool really useful is since we're just building on so much legacy tooling that Excel had built into it, we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. So we can quickly go and rebuild real quick. All right, so now let's go over how th adjusting features work. So now we've got our two. So they're both unsuppressed right now. So let's, um, generally we probably won't want to suppress the entire phase. So let's just look at the 
the cut. So let's go and suppress it real quick. We'll just change that to S, and we'll build that. And then I'll select that and turn that off. And then if we wanted to, we could have some kind of logic or um, um, if F2 is greater than um, 25. Oh, yeah, let's do the if. If F2 is greater than 25, then um, we're going to say it's going to return S. Or we'll say it's U, so the feature will be active. And we'll have it return S to say the feature is inactive. So when we'll say this is equal to F3. All right, so now based on our dimensions, we can sit there and change it like that too. So again, that's just based on if you have certain feature rules that get set up, you can set them all up here. So that's the basics of how equations and dimensions and the basic feature activity work. So we'll go over to another sheet that will look at how to set component activity. So component activity is a little bit more complicated than feature activity because it refers to an assembly. So when a document's inserted into an assembly, it becomes a component. So it has a, an occurrence number. So we can see that here in the tree. So this has been an example, and the number inside the carriage is one. And this is document example with its uh, occurrence number being two. So one of the quirks with the SOLIDWORKS the API is this is how it's represented in API, so we send it back to SOLIDWORKS in that fashion. So we can either control visibility this way or activity. So based on the commands, so in this case we're sending in an activity command. So we're going to say these are both unsuppressed, so let's go and suppress both of those, just changing that to S. And we're going to change that back to you. Okay, now we're going to control some visibility, so we're going to set this to false. And we're going to turn both these, and all this is doing is the show hide command in SOLIDWORKS. So if you wanted to do it, just to unvert it manually, you just do show components, and now they're both visible. And you just run it again and turn it back off if you didn't want them. So this can be useful for setting up certain things of drawings or maybe a step file representation you're working on. Alright, so I'm going to go over the if statements. So if you're familiar with how programming works, and even the if statements in Excel, so how it works is we'll have a we'll have a block of code. So what we'll do is we'll give it a boolean value to process boolean values to process the line inside the block. If true, then the values will be processed. If not, then it will be skipped. So it must be followed by an end if you get an error. So if the condition is false the application will find the end if and skip down to that section. So, just to kind of show how it works, so we're going to, this quick little example, so we're going to set a property in the model, and we're going to call it description, and we're going to set it to a value. So, and then we're going to, if, we're going to change this to true, so if true, then we're going to set the property to if works. And we're going to get the property of description. And then it's going to write that value back out here. So then we're going to have another if. So if f11 equals f9, and then we'll process another if where we'll set the description again. So let's go ahead and run this through real quick. Okay, so now we've got the properties all set, so we can go and open the model just to show you. So now we have our property set. It does work. So let's go and run that through again, and let's set that to false. So this time when it runs through, it will not make it down to this block.
And so we're going to open that up again. So just a value. So it never made it down to the next block to set it. So this is another example of just how to use if statements. And it's also a good example of how to use get properties. So if we wanted, if you have a bunch of properties you need to be set in the model, this can go through and set them all in one quick, if it's, especially if you have something to base off an Excel file. Um, also, if the property does not exist, set property will go and create it. And if get property can't find it, it will put in a not found in the value. Okay, then a, kind of another helper utility. So if you have a whole bunch of documents in a, an assembly that need to be turned off, just based on their document reference, so document reference visibility, you give the name of the document it's looking for, and then it will turn off every document in the assembly that matches that. So we'll run it through real quick, and we'll change it to false real quick. So this will go and turn those all off. So it's kind of a helper if you have some kind of reason you need to turn off all the documents inside of a model. It can be really helpful. Okay, so the next command I want to go through is repeat. So, again, those are familiar with programming. There's a concept in programming called loops. So this kind of duplicates that structure. So we'll have a repeat and end repeat. So what repeat does is anything inside the repeat to end repeat block will get repeated a set number of times. So in the value column, you'll enter the number of times it needs to repeat. And then value 2, the current value of the repeat will be printed out. And values between repeat and repeat will occur until index matches the count number. So basically what that means is we're going to set this up for a repeat with a value of 4 and then we'll just set this to 0. So this is the number of times it will be repeated and then this will be printed out. So what's useful about having the printout here is then you can then reference that printout to do manipulations in the model or even do manipulations for properties, or even if you just needed to do a in an Excel sheet, you could if you needed a simple for loop construct that just didn't exist for you. So, what we can then do is we can we're going to concate a value and just using Excel's concat. So we're going to take value and append the value of G7 to it. So every time it increments, it's going to do value zero, one, two, three, four, and then this is going to take a, an insert. The property in there. So let's go ahead and run this through real quick. So what we'll do is we'll go and open our part real quick and we'll delete the properties out of their head in there. Alright, and then we're done. So that's a pretty quick way to, if you have a whole bunch of, this can be pretty useful if you have a whole bunch of a, occurrences that have similar structures to them. Like if you had block, uh, document block A, B, C, and D, and they had multiple insertions into an assembly, and they did have a common dimension or something between them, you could have it cycle through each one of those based on their occurrence numbers. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, I'm going to make a couple more explaining some of the more advanced functionality. Thank you for watching.